Hello guys, my name is Cassandra and I'm here to invite each and every one of you guys to the Diaspora Transition Network. It's a network for everyone in the diaspora to join. Any issues you have with GRA, Ghana's Register's Office, Lands Commission, they are here to help support and also guide you through it all. So click the link and sign up and join today. I'm not sure what I was doing at the age of 11. But Eleanor knew what she was about from the age of seven. A vocalist, she loved singing, a songwriter. At the age of 11, she had been on the album called Catch 22. Like, how did it all start, sis? At the age of 11, I'm not, I think I was like kicking ball, <laughs> I was playing football with the boys. I actually came from a family where it's me and my older brother are the musicians, but we didn't come from a musical family. My parents don't play. Both of them were actually um, teachers, and so we grew up, you know, doing our studies and being very serious about school. But my older brother started playing piano and actually um, doing drums at the age of two, and he started playing piano at seven, I believe, as well. Wow. And I wanted to be just like my older brother, and so I was like, I want to do it too. Um, but actually, the flute really called me at the age of four. I remember. Um, my parents have videos of me where I would see it on, on stage and I was like, I want to play that one, I want to play that one. Um, and so they measured me, they would measure me every six months to see if I was tall enough and big enough to play because okay. my fingers wouldn't reach the keys. Okay. Um, so when I turned seven, I was, I was a little, little baby, you know, not too tall, but I was just big enough to reach the keys. Wow. And so I started playing um, and it's really been my path ever since. Um, and it hasn't really wavered. Ever. So you saw it on TV, you knew that that was the instrument that you wanted to play and that's where your musical journey started. It is. So tell us about when you were 11 and recording music at that time. It's been really incredible because for me, music started taking me around the world at a very young age um, and that's been my eyes to see, you know, almost every part of the world and I'm only you know, in my, in my young years, or I won't say my age yet. <laughs> um, but when we were, I was seven and my brother was 10, um, our parents actually moved to Cuba for six months. And that was when I first started playing flute. So that was my introduction to learning the instrument. And music, like here, is incredible, it's everywhere. It's part of the culture, it's part of the dances, it parts, it's part of, you know, every household is just playing the music everywhere you go. Um, and so that was my introduction to music, which was, I think a little bit different than the U.S. because it's ingrained into society in a different way. Okay. Um, and so it just kind of pulled me in. Wow. And from there, I just kept going. And we started performing and touring and recording. Wow. Um, At that age, I mentioned that I was probably playing in a park, playing with friends. Did you feel like you've missed out on a childhood or were you just so engraved in what you're doing that it didn't matter what your friends were doing because you were loving your life times yes but almost never and, and my parents didn't push me to play it wasn't like they had to force us to practice or any of that we kind of just wanted to do it um i also did after school activities i did dance and i did i didn't get to do sports because music took all my time um but we were serious, still very serious about our studies um but i got to meet all these other people when i started touring so i would meet kids you know in different parts of the world and, and get to meet somebody here and get to meet somebody there um but it was a it was a serious childhood yeah <laughs> at the because same time it, it, yeah a very lot of serious hours. yeah a lot of hours i mean tell us the, some of the hours that you've had to put in as a child Ooh. um i think well in the thousands for sure wow. um you know when i was first starting i would practice every day for you know at least three four hours um and then that became rehearsals and that became you know, different things. And I was part of this incredible program um, run by a woman uh, named Daisy Newman who actually just passed away. Um, so I'm sending my love to her right now. Um, from the age of seven to 18, I was in this program and it was a eight week summer music program, eight to eight. Um, and we studied, studied, studied and played and really trained. Um, and they sent us wow. about to be musicians. Wow. <laughs> Leading on from the age of 18, how was your music career Gone up. I feel really blessed because I've had an incredible set of mentors and, and older musicians that really took me under, under their wing from a young age. I mean, I credit my community completely and the teachers that I had um, for what my musical journey has been. So I moved to New York when I was 18 um, to study at the Manhattan School of Music and I was following my brother once again. He was at Juilliard. And um, when I got there, 
I moved and within a week I had a call to do my first recording session and my first tour. So I started right away and you know as we all know once you are kind of in the door all these incredible opportunities start coming and you keep proving yourself and you keep proving yourself and showing up on time and yeah. being respectful and being nice and then delivering on a musical side and I haven't really stopped since. I've met Common. He's, I heard. He's, I he's such an amazing person. So tell us about working with um, Common. Yes, so I got called to do, he was doing an album called Black America Again, um, which was a few albums ago, and he needed some flute for the album. And so I came in and I played, um, and you know, I met the whole, the whole team, everybody was wonderful. I'm sure you've met yeah. all of them as well. They're just lovely. Um, and I played my part and then they asked me if I could sing something, and I said, sure, sure. So I sang, and then they all were like, you actually sing? And I was like, oh yeah, I forgot to tell you that part. <laughs> and so from there, I started singing and playing flute and touring with his band. Wow. But how, um, long, how long was the tour? A few years. We did different spot dates like throughout. Um, you know, from that time, maybe the next two and a half years, I was, I was on the road on and off with them. Wow. And then I got to do another feature with him on an album. And still, I mean, you know, as you know, he's so wonderful and he's really the type of person where you can call anytime you need something. And especially the younger musicians, he's really a mentor to us as well. Um, so yeah, I, I, love, I love all of them. Shout out to that team, for sure. <laughs> what do you love most, playing the flute or singing? Mm. Well, I kind of think of them as two hands. Okay. And for me, when I play the flute, what I'm trying to do is sing through the instrument. It's a vessel for what's here. And um, I think when I think about the origins of the music and the origins of the rhythms and the melodies, it comes down to the voice because that was our first instrument. And so it's important to me to tap into that. But I don't know if I can choose. I think, okay. yeah, I don't know if I can choose. <laughs> Okay. You've performed at many amazing places. <laughs> you look at her and you're just like, she's shy. No, she won't be able to perform. <laughs> But you are an incredible performer. Tell us about some of the places that you perform, like the White House. Yes, so actually with Common, we got to do the Tiny Desk series in the White House. Um, that was my second time performing there. And we actually, it was very special, especially because of the content of what we were doing. It was from the album Black America Again. He was talking about the prison industrial complex. He was talking about African-Americans and what was going on in the US. Um, and we went in there and we talked about that on the desk in the White House. Um, and so it was a very historical moment. That was the first time that that had happened. And that was a really special day for yeah. us all to be in there. Um, and it was an, an all African-American team, every musician, every person working, everybody. And you know, we really represented that day, which was very important. Would you say that was the highlight of your musical moment? Or what has been your highlight of your musical moment? That's one of them for sure. Okay. I think for me, my highlights are actually studying with my, like the musical legends from different parts of the diaspora. And that's what I'm trying to do right now is that I've studied with like some legends from different areas and different parts of the world. And those memories, I think are the highlights of my whole musical career. Mention some of them, mention some of so, them. So um, in Cuba, I studied with um, Orlando Maracavaya, who's like the head of the Af one of the amazing Afro-Cuban legends of his time. He's young, but he's a legend legend. Um, and in jazz, Hubert Laws, who's in his 80s now. Um, and here, I'm actually getting to study with an amazing Atetan band player, yes. Della Bochi. I'm so excited about that. He's amazing. So you're gonna, you're gonna get really, really good lessons. So basically, you go to each of these countries and you learn the flute. I've, it hasn't been as structured as I want to make it now, but every time that I've been, that's what I try to do. Um, because I think for me, when I studied and went to college and did musical studies, we learned everything from a very Eurocentric perspective. They tell us that our harmony came from Europe, they tell us that our melodies came from Europe, even in, in jazz sometimes, which is African American music. Um, but for me, when I study, the rhythms came from here, and they came from the African diaspora. So as I'm getting older and being able to travel to more places, it's really, really important to me to get to the heart of that and really study where these things are coming from, the, the culture behind it, the rituals behind it, you know, where it all came yeah. from. So I really know my roots. Tell us what you're working on, what it's gonna, what it's gonna sound like. Yes. So I'm very excited about my new album. Um, this is my first solo project. 
I'm doing a few because this one is very vocal centered. Okay. Um, and I'm also working on some food stuff as well. But this one, I'm working from different producers um, all over the country. I actually have something set up here with Kill Beats. Oh, Kill I'm super Beats. excited about that. Oh, um, nice. And it is kind of like a mix between R&B, hip hop. There's some Afro beats in there. There's some kind of like a mix of all the things that I am. <laughs> okay. So now let's talk about Africa. Yeah. Because you have an African middle name. I do. Yes. I do. I have a Yoruba middle name. You have a Yoruba middle yes. name. So have you traced your DNA to Yoruba? So we haven't traced my my so my father's African American and he gave me and my brother Yoruba middle names. He's Abayomi and I'm Ayodele because he wanted us to be proud of our heritage that traced back to Africa. That's really important to him. And his mother actually was one of the first African American women to do her genealogy wow. and trace it all the way back through slavery. Wow. Um, she hasn't done a DNA test okay. to trace back to exactly where Wait, in okay. Africa, but we grew up and his whole family is very, very, very centered around making sure that the whole family and all the children and grandchildren are honoring our history and very aware of that we came from here. You're currently in Ghana. How many African countries have you visited or is it just your, this is your first stop? So I've been, and this was some years ago, uh, when I was maybe four or five, I went to Morocco, okay. but I need to go back as an adult. Yeah. And I've been to South Africa as well. But this is the first time I've traveled as an adult by myself, going somewhere outside of a tour. Okay. So being able to spend some real time, mm. you know, because when we're touring, we spend a few days and then we move to the next place. Yeah, and you're working, you don't really get time to exactly. explore. Exactly, or so, really immerse yourself in the culture. So how have you found it so far? It's been amazing. Yeah. It's been incredible. I mean, every day has been amazing. The people are so warm. The musicians that I've met here have been just so, so giving and just want to play and like amazing also on top of that, of course. Um, and just to see everything going on here when it comes to fashion, music, dance. I mean, there's just, there's people doing things yeah. everywhere and it's amazing. And I've gotten a little piece of that everywhere I go and I want to see more. Of and I course. think you know, in the U.S., people don't, don't know what is going on and they don't know how much is and what an amazing, you know, outside of the culture, but businesses that are budding and yeah. everything that's happening. So more people need to come and see it for themselves. Absolutely. You know, the music connects to the culture in a deeper way. You see it as part of people's daily life. You see it as part of their rituals. You see it as part of, you know, when they go to a party, they're dancing, yeah. you know, which is, that's how I like to, to do it. In terms of the language that we use, is it a barrier? Does language mean anything? You know, like we'll be singing in Chi or Ga or whatever. Does it make a difference when it comes to music? I don't think it does. I don't think it does because when you hear the melody and the, and the, the mood behind it, the music to support it, I always feel it regardless of what it is. And I always ask, well, so what are you saying? Um, and I think, you know, you might miss a couple things, but you know, in, in, a, in the United States, we're listening to, to music from here and it doesn't stop us at all. I think you feel the beat, you feel the music, you feel it, and you can go from there. We'll be back and we'll talk about your journey in Ghana right now and what you see yourself doing in the next few years. Okay, we'll be right back. At Cedar Lane Health Foods, you get a whopping 10% discount with your Goober Diaspora card on a variety of seeds, nuts, spices, juices, and much, much more. Rush now and get your Goober Diaspora card. Goober Card, the best discount card in Ghana.
Lucky's Place is the place to be if you want to dig in and enjoy the best of local and continental cuisine. Ghanaian flavors come alive and there is a well-stocked open bar which serves you the best of local and foreign drinks to accompany your food. So grab a Gooba Dice Picard and make your way to Mango and Lucky's Place. Enjoy a huge discount of 15% off on all your favorite Ghanaian dishes. Guba Card, the best discount card in Ghana. Welcome back from that short commercial break. I'm still joined by this beauty, um, Elena. She's here. We're talking about music. We're talking about Africa. We're talking about Ghana right here. But I want to talk to you about you being an educator. What have you been doing in, in that, that side of things? What are you doing? So I actually just began formally starting this program. I've been teaching for a long time in different places that I go and having private students doing master classes. Um, but I just zeroed in my focus to starting this program called Girls Empowerment Through the Arts um, for young girls of color in, in, in the United States, um, 13 to 18, to use music as a way to support their self-confidence, help them express themselves, and really find an expression to deal with traumas, to deal with going on in the world, to deal with just expression in general. And for me, when I was growing up, I wish that I had known to use my words through music a little earlier. Um, because, you know, I use the flute, but there's no words. And I didn't start writing until a little later. Um, and I'm actually working with Queen I mean on a few projects as well because you know she does incredible educational work um, and so I'm I'm just about to start implementing this in the US um, and doing 10 to 12 week trainings with young girls where they develop a project of their own and in that 12 weeks they write and do everything themselves based on their own words experiences and through that taking them through like a route of self-confidence and also time management and just working on either poetry, songwriting, or creative writing. That's fantastic. You often hear that people say, it was my music that took me out of the situation. It was my music that made me stop what I was about to do. How important is music psychologically, spiritually impact somebody's life? How important is music? It's so important. I mean, I don't, I don't even really have the words to describe, I think, the depth of how far it can go. Whether it be just to brighten your day, or whether it be part of a spiritual experience, or whether it be, you know, something that you need to really lift you up. And I've seen it happen, you know, to everyone I know, myself included. Um, and I think just the fact that it's everywhere and that there's, so, there's never a lack of it. Um, and I think it's inside of everyone. I believe everyone's a musician. I think some just are trained, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, but I think for everyone to be able to use their voice and express themselves in that way is really important. And I think the flute also is a very emotional instrument. You hear it and it, it almost does something to you. What is it about the flute and the way it's played that it makes you feel a certain way? To me, I, it's very close to the human voice to me. And also kind of sounds like a bird <laughs> as yeah. well. Um, I think something about its tone, it's, I, I don't really have the words because I really think the flute chose me, I didn't choose it. Yeah. Um, and so, to me it sounds like singing. Mm. It sounds like... And is it, is it difficult to learn? Is the flute really, really difficult to learn? Is it like learning the piano? Or it's difficult. It's difficult? Okay. <laughs> it's difficult because, you know, there's the air, but once you get it... The air? The, yes. Tell, tell me about the air. <laughs> um, you have to just kind of figure out how to put the air into the instrument without getting yeah. dizzy. Um, and then from there, the fingerings and all, but it's also an ancient instrument. I mean, you see it in every culture. Everyone has their own version, you know? And so I think it's a very special spiritual instrument. And then how long does it take you to learn the flute for you to actually get, get it right? To get it right, maybe, maybe a few years. A few years? Maybe. You could do it faster, but I'm, I'm setting the bar high. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So. You start at the age of seven. Yes. When did you think that I've got it now? I'm I'm proper. A, well, how do you call it? A flute flute person? Flutist. Yeah. Flutist. Okay. I don't think I felt like I was really there until I was like ten years in. Um, you set the bar really high for yourself, and then you say, okay. Um, I think for me, 
that was studying how to really channel my emotions into the instrument and I often felt like I couldn't quite get there. And so once I was, I, I took two years to just think about how to really channel those emotions and what they sound like. And when I did that, I felt like I could have the proper cry, I could have the proper form of happiness I could have. And that's when I felt like, okay, maybe I can do it. Yes, I love it. Do we have the flute here? Oh, I can get it. Yes, can we Regardless? get the flute, please? It's on my desk. In terms of collaborations in Africa, who are you really, especially Ghana, yeah. apart from the guy that's gonna, um, Della, Della. Della's gonna show you how to do the flute, but who else are you looking to work with? Well, I have many people. I was actually really excited to work with Amrano because one of the things I'm trying to do is connect with some different rappers and singers. Because that's, you know, really the type of music I'm making right now. Um, I really want to work with some producers to make some, so that's why I'm really excited to work with Beats. Um, I am super open to other people. I'm, I'm here, like, looking to connect so you would, with So you would want to work with a rapper. So we have a rapper called Sarkodie. Mm, I don't know I if know. You, yes, you know I Sarkodie. Do. do you think that you could do something? Absolutely. Yeah? <laughs> Absolutely. I would love that. With the flute and his rap? Oh, and yeah. Because flute, actually, in the United States, is being used under all these different rappers' songs right now as, like, an underneath whether it be future or whether it be like a lot of especially in atlanta right now they're doing a lot of flute wow so i would love to bring that in okay for sure so if i hook you up with sarkodie yes you guys are gonna make a mega hit mega and you must feature my name in that track no problem even if it's a doo -doo 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 -denta, whatever gotcha. it it's done <laughs> i'll absolutely do it okay so we've got the flute coming on stage right now thank you <laughs> thank you um please take it out let's see I just take my lip gloss off and I'm play it. <laughs> okay. And then, um, is it the flute really expensive? Is it a really expensive instrument? So, it doesn't have to be. Okay. It doesn't have to be. I, the first flute I played, my parents got it from, they got it from a friend, and we got it for very inexpensively, and I played that flute for seven years. Okay. And okay, then lost I lost for a very long time. Lost for a lot, and then I saved up all my money okay. to get this flute. Okay. <laughs> um, which is my, you know, a little more expensive. Okay. But about it how have much? To be. About how much? So the first, the first one I got was 80 US. Okay. Okay. Um, and this one, it run. <laughs> I oh, actually wow. got it from a lady who was playing in the Australian Symphony, and she decided she didn't want to play it anymore. So she sold it to me for 1500. But it runs for wow. much more than that. It runs for eight. What? Yeah. <laughs> the flute. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Wow. Which is, they have all types of ones. They have ones that are gold and those run for, wow. you know, I'm trying to get an endorsement thousand, right now thousand. for once. Okay. So we'll see if I can do that. Okay. Yeah. So can you play a little part? Of course, okay. for a long time that's a short one that sounds so soothing it sounds so beautiful it sounds like you know when you go into um a spa a massage place and they've got mm. those music that's on that relaxes you whilst you have your massage that is how i feel i'm telling you that this it's this something. instrument it's is something oh my goodness you know what i'm gonna i am gonna call sarkodie for you guys to do a collaboration with this because i think it will bring a different dynamic to the music that we do here yeah. and it adds an extra flavor and so i'm going to make that happen i would love that i can oh, hear it already right. you can, can hear it you can hear it. Yes. you can no, see it as sure. well behind I, this is like i love playing playing in and weaving wow. into like what somebody's saying it's amazing wow i think you're doing an amazing job and you are so you know, she's one of those ones that's really shy, but she's doing stuff in the background, like doing so much incredible work with your music and your talent, your songwriting, and the fact that you just, your passion for music as well. So we will make sure that you stay in Ghana here, you do the right collaborations, and I'm sure one of these days, we'll come back on the show and you'll be like, Denta, 
guess what we've done? I'm already knowing. <laughs> I can't wait. <laughs> Thank you so much, Elena, for joining me on the show. It's been absolutely a pleasure. We can't wait for your solo album. And um, we will see you in Ghana. I'm sure you're going to be coming Definitely. more and more and more. Definitely. What do you have to say to those African-Americans, those people in Cuba, about Ghana and the opportunities that are in Ghana? There are so many incredible things going on here, incredible artists, filmmakers, fashion designers. The culture is amazing. You have to come see it for yourself. Um, and make it as soon as possible because it's something that you do not want to miss. She said it, you do not want to miss it and you don't want to miss the Denta show. I will see you next week, same time. Stay blessed.